Hi, I'm Piers Lamb. I'm a student at Leeds Beckett University studying business management with marketing. This is my first assignment for my marketing module, which is a vlog on theories from marketing related to a company. The company I've chosen for you today is a watch brand called Hublo. So first I'm going to run you through some of the brief history of the brand and just kind of give you an overview. So who exactly are Hublo? They're a Swiss based watch brand with the slogan, be the first, be unique and be different. They're actually the first watch company that incorporated rubber materials into a high end watch. They're owned by the giants LMVH, also known as Moet Hennessy Louis Vuitton, which is also the owner of other high end watch companies, Tag Heuer and Zenith. Here's a brief history. Founded in 1976 by Carlo Crocco, Hublo stands for the French word porthole, and as said before, it was renowned for its rubber strap. So as I said in the previous slide, Hublo is owned by a company called LMVH. This is the world's leading luxury house. They're a public limited company, and they have interests in all ranges, ranging from fashion, leather, perfumes, jewellery, and watches. And as I mentioned again before, they own three companies, Tacula, Zenith, and Hublo. So now you have a brief understanding of the brand that I'm covering, I'm going to go into some more theories. So first we're going to start with market orientation, which I'll bring up on the screen. So here on the screen we have the definition for market orientation. The activity, set of instructions and processes for creating, communicating, delivering and exchanging offerings that has value for customers, clients, partners and society at large. So basically, what this means is it's when a company researches certain needs and wants of the customer and uses that to form its product or to improve the product. They'll also do this with their services, so their online services or their chat lines or repair services. So I'm going to show you a couple of slides which shows how Hublo uses market orientation to improve their product. So the first slide shows the Big Bang. This is Hublo's bestseller. The watch accounts for 60% of their sales. It's a watch for the young people and their consumer base is around 25 to 40 years old. It's for people looking for an identity and you can recognise the watch from a long way away because of its size and its presence. So here we show another watch in uh, Hublot's collection called the Classic Fusion. This watch is aimed more at a traditional branded watch. Uh, so it'll be for an older generation uh, who doesn't want, who don't want a, a watch that's as flashy and in your face. We can clearly see from the information shown that the market orientation surrounding Hublo really does influence the products they produce. They target a younger, flashier generation with the Big Bang, whilst they also provide the classic fusion for their customers who prefer a more traditional timepiece. So now I'm going to talk to you about the macro environment. Here's a slide with the definition on. The major external and uncontrollable factors that influence an organisation's decision making and affect the performance and strategies. These include the economic factors, demographics, legal, political and social conditions, technological changes and natural forces. So these are basically the external factors that can affect the performance of the business. The main factors generally are political and legal reasons, so new legislation coming into place, economic situations, fluctuation in the market, social cultural reasons, so people's wants and needs changing, and then technological advances. So here we look at the technological effects. The age of the smartwatch. Companies of the likes of Apple released watches that could do a hell of a lot more than their standard timepiece. This would have been a threat to the watch market. Although Hiblo did not respond with an actual smart watch, the company's Tag Heuer, which is owned by LVMH, did respond, and they announced a partnership with Google and Android to produce their own smart watch. All in all, this didn't actually end up affecting Hublo or any of the other watch companies, as the smart watch seemed to be a bit of a flop. So here's some evidence I've found of economic effects that can happen on the to the watch industry. 
Fluctuations in specific markets can cause changes in the company's sales. In 2015, changes to the markets in Asia dropped, which meant a 6% fall in sales. However, changes like this do have to happen often, so there was no need for major concern. Chairman Jonathan Rupert of Richmount, who's the second biggest luxury goods company behind LVMH, did say, There is a number of other factors that can affect the industry, such as environmental changes which can stop the production of certain products, or even the materials needed. Next we're going to look at the microenvironment. Here's the definition. Factors or elements in an organisation, immediate area of operations that can affect its performance and decision making freedom. These factors include competitors, customers, distribution channels, suppliers and the general public. So these are basically internal factors affecting the performance and decisions of a company. For example, what competing companies have to do with the company don't, grabbing customers' attention through sponsorship or through using influential people as ambassadors, or the price of materials produced by suppliers and whether they can deliver them on time for production. So first we'll look at ambassadors. Most high-end watch companies have ambassadors. This is to commemorate the brand and place the products in the limelight. Rolex for one is one of Hublot's competitors. The ambassadors of Rolex are the likes of Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson, Roger Federer, these guys are all huge sports athletes that get a lot of media attention. This is actually one of Hublot's stronger areas in their marketing schemes. They respond with a number of well-known ambassadors such as Pele, Usain Bolt, Kobe Bryant, Dwayne Wade, and they actually give some of them their own limited edition watches. Hublot also sponsored a lot of big name events, their main one being the Football World Cup. This gave them maximum exposure. The CEO of Hublot even said that they had five times more visitors to their website than they would do usually. One million in one month. We see a strong side of Hublot's competitive angle against the likes of Rolex. When they sponsor things like the Football World Cup and the Pacquiao May Mayweather fight. We see a great range of thought and theories put into this brand, which also correlates with the success. This shows how theories really do work in the marketing world as a whole. Thanks for listening.